welcome back. In the last video we talked about enantiostasis and compared enantiostasis to homeostasis, how they were different and how they were similar. And also we looked at why it's important for salt levels to be regulated, like what salt does if salt is too low or too high in the body of animals and plants. And we're going to discuss something similar in this one. I'm going to read over the syllabus requirement here. Um, students will process and analyze information from secondary sources and use available evidence to discuss processes used by different plants for salt regulation in saline environments. Again, that word regulation just means to be able to regulate it, so to keep it at a constant level. And the word saline, the word saline refers to salty. So saline is the same as salty. So what uh, processes or what adaptions do plants have? to be able to cope, cope with salty environments. And if you remember from the last video, we talked about the word estuary. And what an estuary was, which is an area that connects the ocean to fresh water, so to a lake or to a river. So you can, you can imagine um, this picture again, and we've got low tide and high tide. So if you have mangroves, this time we don't have animals, but we've got mangroves. So these green dots here are the mangroves. So during low tide, you have these mangroves um, sitting in fresh water, so maybe in a lake or maybe in, in a river, and the ocean is all the way back. So, the, so at the moment it's very non-salty. So their environment is not salty because they live in fresh water. But a couple of hours later, high tide comes and everything changes. So now the ocean has taken over, so that dark blue part is the ocean. It's taken over. Now same mangroves which are here, now they are in a salty environment. So it's a huge change in just a couple of hours. And even though it's hard to imagine what salt would do, I mean, if you're living in a salty or non-salty environment, but just to make it easier to understand, you can visualize yourself living, maybe having minus 100 degrees Celsius during the night and plus 100 degrees Celsius during the day. Right? So that huge fluctuation, a massive fluctuation in temperature would just be too hard to deal with. Like It would be very, very uncomfortable having those two extremes. And the same thing for salt as well. And remember, if we have too much salt, what happens to our enzymes? So um, this is again the enzyme, we've got an E for enzyme, we've got S for substrate, and we've got that binding, so this is the active site. So that pink was the active site, that's where they bind. And the role of the enzyme is usually to um, increase the rate of reaction, so increase the speed of chemical reactions. So what these enzymes would do is they would break these substrates apart. That's nice job well done, so that's good. But the problem is if we have too much salt, so I'll write too much salt on this here. What actually happens is the shape of that enzyme, so again that E for enzyme, becomes something called denatured. And what that means is that this enzyme can't do its job, it can't break that down, and it stops working. So it's bad to have too much salt in um, a tree or in a plant, usually. And only in antiostasis um, organisms can cope with that. One, the ones that home do homeostasis can't cope with that high level of change um, because their enzymes become denatured. So most plants need to have some way of being able to cope with those high salt levels. So I'll go over those couple of adaptions now, the ones that different mangrove trees exhibit. These are all mangrove trees. This is number one here a mangrove tree. What you can imagine is it's right now it's in salty water so there might be lots of salt around it and that salt might actually even go up so salt might go through the tree but the problem is now there's too much salt in the actual tree so what this tree can do is can grab that salt put it in its leaves and it has these special glands so these are something called salt glands and they are on the top of leaves, so for some of the mangrove trees, salt glands. So you can imagine that salt going in and then kind of being ejected out again. So it it, it brings it out. It's just all that salt it leaves again through these glands. They kind of fire them back out again, right? So um, here we've got salt leaving again. So it comes in, but because it is too much, too much salt, we want to make sure we get rid of that salt again. And the one of these mechanisms that a mangrove tree can do this is by absorbing it, then 
removing it again through the glands in the leaves by ejecting them. Another way is um, this mangrove tree also, so there's salt in the actual water, in the salty water. It absorbs that salt and then it goes into the leaf. And then it might not go into all leaves, it might only go to a few leaves, so you can imagine maybe a couple of these leaves becoming very, very salty. And once they've gotten way too salty, what happens is the leaf actually drops. So the tree just says, okay, this leaf is too salty. Just cut off that part. And then these leaves will drop. So like I've drawn down here, these leaves then drop into, onto the floor because they're too salty. So another mechanism that mangroves can deal, certain mangroves can deal with it is to drop salt to drop leaves. And salt only accumulates in certain leaves. Salt accumulates. Accumulates means um, increases in number or increases in amount. Accumulates in some leaves. So in those leaves that it accumulates, it, it, it gathers up, will then become really salty and once they are too salty they'll start dropping. So even though this actual mangrove tree has absorbed that salt and they simply drop the salt again. Uh, salty leaves after a while so it's all good again. And the last mechanism that these mangrove trees, so these mangrove trees can do, mangrove trees, and these mangrove trees are usually found in estuaries, the area where you have both ocean and fresh water meeting. These um, salt more want to come in here, but they actually they're getting blocked, so the root just doesn't absorb them. So you have them blocking; they can't enter. So all the other ones, they were absorbing it, but then they were getting rid of it again. And some mangroves, they just li literally block the entrance. So in this case, we have roots blocking entry of salts. And that way as well, that way we can deal with high salt, even though there's much salt around. There's a lot of salt in the actual ocean, which the mangrove might be in during high tide. It can't actually enter, so it can't go in because the leaves f block it from entering. So it can't go in. So, this, so the tree itself doesn't become too salty. Right? So I'll go over those three different ways because you need to be able to um, know how certain plants, so for example the mangrove, how it can deal with high salt levels. What it does to be able to survive in a saline environment, and saline refers to salty. So how do these mangrove trees survive a salty environment such as an estuary? Remember so, uh, estuary is was the area where you have fresh water and seawater both hitting. So this is now fresh water but here now the same, same mangrove trees would be in salt water. So how do they survive that? Because the problem is it actually it does cause problems such as denaturing your enzymes. So number one way was uh, salt glands. So it absorbs here, it absorbs through the stem, puts it into leaves and the leaves and make sure that they use salt leaves again through these salt glands by checking them out. That was number mechanism number one. Mechanism number two was yeah it would absorb it so it would absorb, but they accumulate so they collect in one of the, in a couple of the leaves of the plant, and once it become too salty they just drop down so they would just drop their leaves. So dropping the leaves was another mechanism dropping salty leaves, and the third mechanism was if you sim simply block the entrance. So um, in all the other two examples we had salt coming through the tree. In example number three. The roots are blocking the entrance of salts, so salts just don't enter the the actual tree. So um, there's no problem living in a salty environment because salt just doesn't enter. And that was example number three. So I hope that, I hope that helped.